Thank you for joining us for the Health Literacy Show with Dr. Baruch and Sister Halise. Today we have in the studio Ms. Denise Davidson, and on Skype we will be speaking with Dr. Pooch. Good morning. Yes, indeed. It's a great morning to be alive and well and to be a part of a campaign to make a difference. I am Dr. Baruch, and um, we are doing a show that is sure to empower and enlighten you and make you have a better and greater understanding of, of your health and specifically your responsibility to your health in that uh, I think many of us have come to the conclusion that your health is the responsibility of your medical doctor or your pharmaceutical drug dealer. And in neither case is, the, is it the truth. Your health is your responsibility. Take care of it. And we have in our studio, indeed, good morning, Helise. Good morning, my beloved sister, Denise. Good morning. Denise good morning. and Helise. Good morning. Oh, we got to do better. We <laughs> got to swing this over here. You okay. Good morning. I have my own mic, yes. Yes. <laughs> good morning. And how are you this morning? I am wonderful. I woke up. Wonderful. Yes. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, we, we're going to uh, grab Dr. Pooch in just a minute, and we're going to bring him on under our other account. And if um, if it's convenient, maybe we can uh, get him to uh, chime in with us on uh, on the computer here. But anyway. Doc, Dr. Denise? Is it doctor? No. I, I it might be today. We just, you know, <laughs> we sometimes. Resource guru. I'll yeah, take that. Yeah, resource we, guru. Yeah. <laughs> resource guru. Yes. Okay. That's what's up. We are, um, we're talking about health and wellness. You drop by my restaurant. You come here frequently when you're in town. You come by the restaurant, and, uh, and, and you and I strike up a conversation. I can't even remember how it started, but I, I oftentimes, as I'm sure you can relate, you know, we do things by the spirit. So the spirit brought me over. I'm I'm listening to your voice and I'm feeling the energy and I'm like, okay, this is you know this is a connect. Let's go ahead and and make this connection. So we did, and uh, I just want our audience there, the eLife Media, the Health Literacy, the DC DMV, and wherever else you all might be audience to get a chance to learn a little bit more about you while I get Dr. Pooch here set up. Who are you? <laughs> and I say that because I am in the process of being in balance, uh, being in, in, in balance because I have so many, many, in many balls that are in the air. Um, I, again, am a resource guru that I consider myself and a health activist working to empower our community to take charge and not allow for the white coat to determine and direct and dictate what and how mm -hmm. it's done. So I am in the community and have been in the community in, in LA. I'm from DC, this is my home, Northeast DC. Been in Cali for over 30 years, but this is my home. So how I ended here is again, being in the restaurant that I come to when I land, this is my first stop. Sometimes <laughs> I have people come to the restaurant to get food so they can meet me at the airport with, with food, with mm -hmm. vittles, because we know we need sustenance to be able to do our work. And my, my, my motto is health is wealth. Um, you can have a PhD, a MD, a JD, but without health, there's no life. Okay. Yeah, um, that's the truth. So it don't matter if you don't so have your health, right? So yeah, it don't matter, truth. don't matter. Um, so we know that anyone that is on their way out, be it by choice or not, if they could change it and give away everything, uh, then they would do that right. to, to have health. So we can make a difference by being in a preventive mode mm -hmm. and not allowing for that crisis state to always be our way of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just grateful to be on this journey and the path and have a team that I have on the West Coast that I want to integrate with the East Coast because we know that there's no division, there's no separation, we're one. What happens to me happens to you, what happens to you happens to me. <laughs> connected to Dr. Pooch, who I'm just going to, I'm going to do a little in midstream engineering here. And um, 
I'm going to ask Dr. Pusher to put a light on himself so he's, he's a little brighter, if that's possible. But um, while, while you've been doing this work, what is it that, you know, uh, prompted you to get engaged in this? What is it that made you say that this is what you want to do, you know? Well, again, it's been a transformation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't start out on this path. Okay. Um, I've done and been experienced everything from A to Z. So um, that way I have life experiences ca that some can relate to, or if I haven't had the experience, others have had the experience in my circle. Um, again, I have several hats that I, I wear. Um, I am American Family Therapist, um, soon to be licensed. I have a community mental health clinic that is under uh, acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine clinic that my 77-year-old mentor owns and operates. And um, I have a 92-year-old mentor that has two schools in South Africa that I'm doing work there. So I'm under the tutelage of very capable, powerful women mm. um, and, and, uh, and grateful. And that is one of the things that I'm working with another sister that is in Philly that is working with our elders. And everybody doesn't get to become an elder. Right. It comes with um, work and it comes with um, doing the work and being the work. Right. So she's doing that work and we're doing some work um, work together. Mm -hmm. And then I have a strong, 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 amazing um, black woman for my mother that um, has guided and directed me and um, as well a strong relationship that I've been in since ninth grade uh, with my soulmate that is from DC. So again, support and resources matter. And yes. based on what I know about the food here, I know this is a good place to, to start for community. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful to be here and to share um, great. what I've been gifted with. Great, great, great. And why don't you introduce uh, to our audience uh, the brother who we'll be bringing on in just a minute. Do you mind? Sure. Well, Dr. Dr. Pooch um, is part of my team on, on the West Coast. And he became part of my team because when I'm out and about, um, I connect. I call myself a connector as well as a resource guru. If I don't know it, I'll find it. Mm -hmm. So he works at one of the local <coughs> farmer's markets, and I saw these beautiful books that he had on display. And uh, I feel it important to start with um, our youth, to start educating them about nutrition and health. I feel like you should have a PhD by the time you finish um, school in nutrition because these bodies, we contain them and we have them and know nothing about them. Mm -hmm. So the series of books that he has does that well. So I brought him on as one of my expert speakers for a program that I do in the community as a chronic disease life coach. Mm -hmm. So he comes in and speaks and, and, and talks and shares. So again, building my network and bringing in um, uh, the generation that can carry this on because in, in my network I have elders but they are passing on so we need to build and, and again have that intergenerational work be, be done. So Dr. P Pooch is part of that team that comes in and shares and shed his, his light with his beautiful family that, that he has and has been gifted with a beautiful baby boy that he just um, helped usher into the world. Mm -hmm. great, so great. Dr. Pooch. Dr. Pooch, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, a uh, little technical difficulty. Can uh, your your voice is a little choppy? I don't know whether there's something that we might be able to do to uh, adjust the the quality or strength of that signal on that. And why don't you try that again? Let's hear that introduction, Doctor Doctor Pooch. Oh, uh, good morning. How are you? Great morning to you. Is uh, can you can you hear me? I can hear you better now. Oh, okay. I'll just a little bit. Okay. Great introduction. Um, Dr. Baruch, it's a pleasure meeting you. It's a pleasure uh, talking to you. And uh, Denise, she's she's my right hand in L.A., as she said. Uh, we're really, um, I'm really blessed to have met her. And uh, she, life is life is an incredible journey. And uh, we're, we're definitely here. I'm here at the capacity for the youth uh, until... A hundred years old, so that's that's my goal to be here for for the kids and to give them uh, stepping stones. Uh, unfortunately, our youth are really lost right now uh, in terms of health literacy. Nobody 
learning how to read labels should be part of early education, early curriculum. Uh, these are things that uh, will, would assist children in their everyday life. Uh, I mean, <laughs> if simple, s simple tools like learning how to monitor the sugar and salt, just those two. I have a book, uh, it's not out yet in my Get Well Johnny book series. It's called Sugar and Salt Are Always at Fault. And if people really understood that, adults and children, we wouldn't have the rates of chronic disease that we currently have. Sugar and too much sugar and salt are always at fault. I mean, any any chronic illness, we're talking diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, different sorts of inflammation all throughout the body can be regulated just with those two things, uh, the regulation or the swapping out of uh, a natural sugar and a natural salt. And that discussion goes deep. So I'll just stop there. <laughs> okay, great, great. And, and um, Dr. Pooch, you're from, where are you from? Let's just get a little history on you. Where, where okay. are you from and how did you get to where you are and doing what you're doing? Well, uh, it's been an incredible journey. I, I was born in Los Angeles, California. Uh, I was raised here for um, a, a, a good part of my life, the majority of my life. However, the most uh, impactful years of my life, I was out of the country. Uh, first, I went to Paris, France, and uh, then I went to Dakar, Senegal, where my father is from. Uh, you know, if if you know anything about Los Angeles in the early '90s, it really wasn't the place to be, especially uh, in you know in the neighborhoods that we grew up in. It really wasn't uh, an ideal place. And my father, uh, God bless him, he really bent over backwards to make sure that we, uh, my myself and my siblings, weren't the average Americans. That we had a different experience and a, and a, and really a world view. So uh, I, I thank him every day for that. And um, uh, he currently lives uh, with my sister as, uh, as well uh, in Dakar, Senegal. So I'm still here in Los Angeles, California, because I feel that I have a lot of work to do with our youth here. Uh, Dr. Pooch was actually a name given to me early on, early as early as one year old. I know uh, for a fact that I was being called Dr. Pooch. Um, I even have uh, my grandmother, who unfortunately she passed away years ago, but uh, and many other uh, elders in Senegal who don't speak French, who don't speak English, they only speak the uh, the, the the native dialect uh, Wolof. And they all call me Pooch, so it's a name that stuck. Uh, it was given to me. I don't know how. I asked my father. He doesn't know how. It's, it, it must be um, uh, from the Most High, and it's just a name that stuck. And look at me now. I'm, I'm in the world of, of, of health and wellness, so there, there's always a, a reason for everything. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's powerful. And you are, of course, uh, welcome to the show, we appreciate you. This is uh, your de debut, but hopefully not your last time Thank coming you. on the show and sharing with us. Um, I, I did get an opportunity to see some of the work that you have created, and uh, it it is really empowering. You know, when you think of being able to put into a child's hand a book that will lay a foundation for a philosophical understanding about how to process, how to deal, how to, how to make decisions, how to make the right decisions, what are the options and what are the possible outcomes, you know. So you taking that on as, a, as an author and teaching our children at an early age is uh, obviously something so critical when we look at the world today. And, you know, when I go to the hospital and I might be there to visit somebody who's just given birth to a baby, they didn't just give birth to a murderer. Mm. They mm. didn't just give mm. birth to, you know, a womanizing creep, right? They didn't just give birth to, to somebody who's, who's got a lifelong commitment to eating the worst possible food on the planet. Mm. Right. You know, they given, uh, they've given birth to, you know, a, a beautiful blessing and an opportunity for upgrade and, and progression as a people. You know, all that is built in if it could just be nurtured. And I think about what you're doing as, um, as that which will help to support not only the nurturing, but even planting the seed. 
and then the supporting nurturing that is necessary in order to uh, get our, our children, our youth, and, and our do adults even onto the right path. So we're very thankful for the work that you're doing. And um, you're, you're involved in the farmer's market out there. And we know that um, my, my journey in the food space started back when I was listening to a woman that didn't look like any of us and she was practicing her speech and she said if you control a man's food you control him mm. and at the moment she said him like a stepford husband i got up left my my terminal i was working on the computer system she was practicing her speech i was making sure all the devices were connected i walked away i called my wife i said we're about to open up a restaurant mm. she's like what mm. i said i'll talk to you when i get home mm. wow uh, knowing the power that was in the hands of individuals back then and not really seeing the evidence of it as much so back then as you do today when you look up and you see that chronic disease has become the norm mm. you know you realize that whoa you know I, I got in the game I got in the game too late I got in the game too small sometimes when I look at it you know because I wanted to stop all of this mm. you know but we also you know we realize that there's a process so we're not giving up but uh, you know, it's good to know that there the soldiers out there on the on the West Coast, you know, between you and Denise and the crew out there, you all are you know having an impact on the folk uh, as well. Sister Denise, you are here for a conference in the D.C. metropolitan area. Tell us about what it is that is going on that I'm sure all of our viewers and listeners would want to learn more about. Well, I am here as um, a chronic disease life coach that um, is through an organization called Black Women for Wellness that does empowering work in Los Angeles. It's funded through Black Women's Health Imperative here in the DMV area. We are all over the country, and the program that we provide for the community at no charge is funded through the CDC, which I have feelings about that, but we won't go into that on this show. This program is a program that helps us change our lifestyle, not diet. Um, help us to understand the emotions, the um, food, everything that goes along with a healthy lifestyle. So it's called the Change Your Life, Change Your Lifestyle program. And it's through the National Diabetes Prevention Program and it's being changed to prevention of chronic disease because we know it's a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. With one comes the other, with the other comes one. Mm -hmm. So really looking at how we do that. The group that's here in the area that I work with and I've connected with, again, um, I, I feel like I'm a connector, is mm. the Collins Wellness Center. It's a husband and wife team. She's a naturopath. I think she's been on the show before. Mm -hmm. um, she has an amazing book um, on, on veganism and cooking and, and being healthy. So I, I think when you talk about being on the battlefield, it's, again, important to establish a network, establish a team, and to connect with whomever is doing the work because it is heavy lifting. Sure. It's heavy lifting. And, um, again, me being with um, elders that are true elders, um, the one that owned and operated and founded the Village Health Foundation that has up to this point been a donation-only clinic, and she funded it through another business she had. Mm -hmm. And then another elder that's 90 that's had a school for 10 years in South Africa. So, again, really looking at how we be of service and how we do service and how we can, we can do that and not feel that we have to um, not be of, of service. And we have to be healthy to do the work. Um, so that's, you know, really important. And, again, I can't stress that team and that network of people more than anything because we know that there's so many causes and factions that cause us to – um, indulge in sugar, um, which is one of the things that we know is a drug, and, and that's a whole nother show. And it's not just, oh, I'm going to stop, and you can stop. You need a team. You need support. You need your body to change, your mind to change, your soul to change, and your spirit to change and be connected back to our source. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I go to the uh, grocery store oftentimes and, and look at people's grocery carts, and y you look, and I'm – I. I it was just three days ago. I'm looking in somebody's grocery cart, and I'm saying, this has got to be like an experiment, ma'am. Mm. Tell me that's not food for you and the family. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, this is this is what we want. What's wrong? Mm. I said, sis, everything that you got, every single thing that you have is 
bad for you. Mm. It's like science experiment yeah. food. Like yeah. It's not real, f- not real, r- not real food as my, as, as my mentor um, Joel would say, it's not real food. Yeah, it's not real food. It's, I don't know what that stuff is. I said, look at the colors. Look at the colors in your, in your cart. So you got so many different colors that are not natural colors. You know, that, that just looks like, it looks like a Christmas tree, the way her cart looked, you know, with all kinds of colors and, and every single thing that she had, everything was sweet. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, we had, of course, gotten to talking now. She, I had gotten past the threshold where I, I risked getting hit by some <laughs> strange woman. And I knew that I could have this conversation. And I just said, um, yeah, I said, um, does anybody in your household have diabetes? <laughs> she laughed. She laughed. She said, yeah, we all do. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Man. As if, as if it just, we're going to get it because uncle got it. No. Right. No. That ties back to, your, that ties back to your networking. Um, what we talked about before, your self-appreciation and your self-love. Because people, me and my friends were just talking about this, how they have studies with, um, you know, taking different medicines just just to get paid five thousand dollars if you stay there for a week, you take these medicines and see see what it might do to your body. But people are willing to do it because you know they don't have maybe don't have that network or don't have that self appreciation and, and, and mm. knowledge. And that's why this is so powerful. Yeah. Well, well, money money is a great motivator in a capitalist world you, where you, like, you know <laughs> it, you don't have access to everything if you don't have money. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And exactly. you don't have access to the good stuff exactly. if you don't have money. That's exactly. true. Because often people won't even want to get the organic food because the price is higher. Yeah. But in the long run, you know, less medical so, bills. So they, Dr. So, Pooch, so go they ahead. Think. <laughs> so they think. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of points that I want to touch on. Come on. Uh, uh-huh. Earlier, Dr. Baruch, you said that um, a child is not born into the world is, uh, becoming, as, as, as a murderer or, uh, you know, a, 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 a pervert or, what, you know, all the uh, uh, negative connotations there. Uh, unfortunately, with the predisposition of uh, a pregnant mother ingesting these foods or this, this, this food-like substance that uh, was in that woman's shopping cart, uh, unfortunately, they do have, they are, they are born with uh, some type of predisposition for a chronic illness. And there's an epidemic right now going on of uh, childhood obesity, uh, newborns being born obese, childhood diabetes. Uh, Unfortunately, these are are diseases that affect people on an emotional level. If you do, if you if you talk to any diabetics uh, and no diabetics, you 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 may have some emotional uh, 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 issues with them. And so it's, it's, it's really, um, uh, there's, there's, there's a, there's a huge parallel that people are missing out on and, uh, in terms of the diet and their emotions. And also in terms of prioritizing the, uh, uh, you know, money and, 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 and things, of course we do live in a capitalist society. We, it's, it's, it's not really a democracy. I don't think it's, a, it's more of a capitalist. Those are two terms that can't coincide. Uh, uh, side by side, capitalism and democracy, either we're for money or for the people. So uh, when you have uh, people that would literally sacrifice themselves for a cup for for some for some money, uh, you know, testing new new medicines as 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 we just said, they have lost the sense of wealth. And Denise and and, and myself, we uh, both like using the term "health is wealth." We, we've totally forgotten what the, the, the value of health. We've forgotten the value of, of living a stress-free, pain-free life because inflammation has become the norm. Mm-hmm. Like, you, like this woman, everybody in her family is diabetic. This is the norm. She, 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 must, she must have come to the, uh, 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 she must have accepted in her consciousness that uh, diabetes is genetic. And there's no going around it. So there's a total relearning that we have to do. Um, and, and it starts in the shopping cart. It, st- it, it starts exactly where, you, where you, you, you stopped her at, in the food aisles or the, the, the so-called food aisles. <laughs> yeah, let's stay, stay out of, as we say, out of the grocery store. Just stay out of them. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I mean, the grocery stores now have the audacity, the unmitigated gall, to have a section labeled 
the healthy natural food section. Mm. Which should be the whole market. And, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm looking at people and I'm like, isn't everybody, isn't everybody going in here? No. You're crazy. Did you know that, that they have, um, taste good. in the grocery stores, in the aisle, it'll actually say like gelatin. Like that's one of the things in the aisle. I'm like, wait, what, what, what? Oh yeah. I'm used to just seeing that as an extra and ingredient in, you know, cereals and candies. And, but that's actually a label for like gelatin pudding, this, this and that. I'm like, wow. And when oh, we yeah. talk about this, it's global. Because when I was in South Africa this past time, I just asked each person, I did Uber a lot. And I asked, you know, about diabetes and what they thought about it and their thought was it's genetic you're going to get it if somebody else has it and you can't get rid of it so we're talking about a, a global attack yeah not and just yeah and, nationally. and, it, and it's a it's an attack by liars so these liars are lying and because these liars have positioned themselves in such a way that they could appear to be the absolute authority. Mm. We're getting mm. into into some mm. spiritual realms mm -hmm. now, but because they have positioned themselves, mm -hmm. they they look as though they really are the deal, the real deal. That they must hey, look. The guy told me, told me that my diabetes has nothing to do with what I'm eating, and you are not about to tell me I'm not going to eat that candy bar. Right. Because yeah. I'm going to eat that candy and take my medicine. And I'm going to take my meds. And, and what about, well, you might get it, so let's start the medicine. Right. The pre-diabetic. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's think about what you might get. Well, let's think about what you can do for prevention. What yeah. things that you can do. And it's, Lifestyle changes. Yeah, and it's interesting when we think about just everything. We had a conversation about immunizations and how it's beginning to be a requirement to go to school. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and people know that Alzheimer's is... Um, a result of some things and then you look at um, autism being a result of some things and people willing to sacrifice their children mm -hmm. take them out of the schools homeschool mm -hmm. but it's it's just a lot and in my opinion it begins with food so sure. you have a place that you can learn how to um, shop wholesomely economically and it doesn't have to cost a lot sure um, so we, we have big loads heavy heavy heavy, heavy, loads. heavy absolutely loads. Well, we didn't get in the game, you know, <laughs> for, for because we wanted it the easy way. Mm. Yeah. We weren't looking for the easy road and all of this. But a couple of things. So you say it starts with the food. I, I'm going to agree, but add a little something on the, on the front end of that. I, and I think it has to do with self-worth. Mm. Yes. If I feel better about myself, even in my current state of consciousness and elevated spirituality, so I think, I, I, I don't even know that we're elevated spiritually until we finally get to the top and realize that, oh, now we really are elevated. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we think we're elevated just because, well, I'm doing better than them. Mm -hmm. So that means I must be elevated. Mm -hmm. Well, they're they at the bottom, mm -hmm. so you don't have to do much. But anyway, so if you can cause an individual to feel better about themselves, you can cause an individual to make better decisions on behalf of themselves. Yes. And that's what I see as a, a necessary in all of this because, see, when I talk to somebody who's got a health challenge, I'm not going home with them. I'm not going to be out with their friends with them. I'm not going to, you know, all the, I'm not going to work with them. I only have that hour, two hour period of time where I can affect them and make them make the decision that my life is important enough now that I'm going to make this change. The choice. Choice. Right. Make the right choice. And, you know, so the, the thing that I have seen that has worked the best is cause an individual to feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. And then when they look at that crap that they knew was crap when before, but because they thought of themselves as crap, well, it's no big deal. I'm crap, so crap goes into crap. Ain't no loss, no gain. You know, I'm good. But when you make a person feel better about themselves, you cause them to now embrace the whole idea of the food and the purpose of food and how we should want to nourish our bodies with the best quality food. And, and that kind of helps with that. That helps with that process. So it's a, it's a learning experience. Go ahead. And I, I agree with that, and that was my approach to dealing with it from a psychological, emotional standpoint. Right. Because we can do all the diets and all of the talking and all of the workshops and all the books, but if we don't get through, in my opinion, to the post-traumatic slave syndrome that we have mm -hmm. and other syndromes and trauma that we have, we, we, can, we can't get to the source, getting to the root of it. Again, right. that part about really feeling that you're worth it and you're worthy. Um, and and uh, what uh, Jewel will say is how dead is dead 
when they say, oh, well, you're going to die if you don't take the medicine, or how much do you need to eat? If you're eating organic, you might eat a little less, uh, but there are ways. So uh, again, really that self-worth and self-value. And, and to go into another thing that I do, I'm uh, a self, radical self-care coach. Mm -hmm. um, because us that are in the trenches also have opportunities. And I say opportunities because in the Chinese character, opportunity and challenge are the same character. So it's just looking at it like, okay, this is an opportunity. How can I do something different? Because we know insanity is doing the same thing the same way and expecting different results. Yep. So really looking at how I can begin to step away from that, again, with the support. So again, that's another piece. I'm a certified Kundalini Yoga instructor for seven years. So I integrate all of those pieces in with really mind, body, soul, and spirit. And that's why it's so well connected with the traditional Chinese medicine piece that my, my mentor owns. So it's, it's an integrative approach to talk therapy. So again, you may be getting music therapy or you may be getting acupuncture, you may be getting massage and dealing with that emotional piece that you don't, oh, I'm not crazy, oh, nothing's wrong with me. Okay, you break your arm, then you go to the doctor to get your arm set. You have something emotionally, you have a team to help you get through that and really removing that stigma so we can get to, to, the, to the source. So mm -hmm. I agree with that, that, mm -hmm. that piece. It definitely, it definitely is a more than one part you know, transition and making those lifestyle changes, it deals with more than just the food, for sure. Yes. Perspective is, in, is very important when it comes to things in life. I think in, if, I could, if I could chime in, uh, I think an important word uh, for everybody right now and everybody's beginning to see uh, this on a global level is holism. Uh, holism, holistic, um, uh, all of these words have the same root as holy. So what we're saying is that the spirit, the mind, body, spirit, all of that is, is, comes from the same root. So when we say holy, something's holy. When we say holistic medicine, um, you know, full body, mind approach, then we're, we're dealing with the same thing. And of course, what we ingest, uh, if, if we are ingesting acid, for example, acidic food, foods that have an acidic breakdown, we will more, ha more than likely have a tendency to have acidic thoughts. Um, if we're in, ingesting foods that are on a higher vibration, then of course our thoughts are going to parallel the food because food is information. Everything that we ingest is information on a cellular level. So our cells are reading this information and, 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 and giving it back to our brains, signaling that information back to our brains. And that's, that's what we feel in essence on a vibrational uh, uh, level. So we need to up the frequency not only of our consciousness, and yes, it does, it does start in our consciousness uh, to, 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 to know our self-worth and know that we are a, uh, not only a part of God because that would be compartmentalizing the most high. Um, in, in, in our society, unfortunately, we compartmentalize everything. Yes. And yes. we are, I believe now, um, in the in the universal space that we're in, people are beginning to see that we can't compartmentalize medicine. If you go to the, you know, you have a a, a, a problem with your with your head, you don't go to the neck and, 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 and head doctor. Or you have a problem with your knee, you go to the knee doctor. Or you have a problem with your back, and it they bounce you around to different places, and each one is going to give you a different diagnosis, as opposed to looking at a whole person. And seeing what affects them on a whole level is 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 their work affecting their stress levels, which in turn is throwing out their back, and then that is affecting their ec economics, and that in turn is in affecting their relationships, and that in turn is affecting their career choices and their education. It's a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we really have to look at the whole person and our society as a whole and our agriculture as a whole and to, to find global solutions that work. Right now we just compartmentalize everything and therefore there will, there will be no solution because it's a very uh, egocentric type of, type of solution, you know, not, not uh, factoring in other people into uh, the equation or other factors into that equation. It's, mm -hmm. it's very uh, compartmentalized. Sure. And a lot of the solutions are um, temporary solutions. Because mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. say you're looking at this from a whole mind, body, and spirit picture, 
that's when you're able to make a true and full re- recovery is mm-hmm. when you're mm-hmm. you take mm-hmm. all these things into consideration but when we're only looking at one thing and only fixing that one thing you know then something else might be lacking or we may have only temporarily fixed mm-hmm. that one thing so it's hard to even say what the first step is just because all of it ties into each other and we've right. become so used to instant gratification you know yes. instant w- not knowing that you turn the oven on it's going to heat up just as fast as the microwave right so again that instant rat- gratification is i want everything now i have to have everything now yeah. so getting away from that and moving back to our natural way of being okay i got a question for both of you what about enemy do we have an enemy and can we identify an enemy so that we we can then start looking at the activity of an enemy and and determine how we might be able to dodge the bullets of the enemy do we have an enemy um uh i i'll I'll go ahead i don't really think uh i i think an enemy uh there's there's nothing outside of ourselves so uh i believe that if there is an enemy it's uh within our own consciousness it's it's within ourselves Uh, so uh, the, the the battle is always within the self. There's nothing outside of yourself. So uh, everything that you see, all the ills that you see in, in, in the world, it's what we have internalized ourselves. So um, it, it, it's really interesting. I was uh, looking at that picture of the, the, the three monkeys that see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. And for years, I've, you know, we, we, we look at that and I, I, I never really internalize what that actually means. Um, it's our choice to see evil, mm-hmm. to speak evil, and to hear evil. It's, it's, it's up to us. So it, the, to me, the enemy is only within our own, it's, it's within our own perception. Hmm. And, oh, go ahead. And I would um, agree, agree with that because we get the choice. And the thing that I say a lot with my yoga classes is you get to set your day. You get to determine how you're going to start when you start out just waking up, taking one deep breath for each decade of your life. If you just do that minimally, you'll get the oxygen to your brain, to your cells, and be able to really take focus on what it is that is your purpose today. Why was I awakened? What is it that I'm to do? So, again, you know, really not looking outside that somebody did this to me or made me do that. No, the devil made me do it. No, let's look inside because we know if we're a reflection of whatever we're doing or whatever we're reacting to. Mm. So I I agree, um, Dr. Pooch. Okay. Well, it isn't that I disagree. It's that I think somehow or another, if I'm looking at this picture you know, you've seen those images where you could see the old woman or the young, the mm-hmm. young princess, mm-hmm. right? So I think the, the, the image, the way we're looking at this image oftentimes determines how then we would approach and, and what, what are the actions that we would uh, take in order to address, in this case, a problem, chronic disease in our community. And um, I think the perspective, the, 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 the way that we see what it is that we're looking at is um, has caused us to to lock down in a space where we see the the real solution to our problems as repulsive. Mm. They are repulsive in every instance, whether it's our diet, whether it's our health, whether it's our our relationships, whether it's our you know our economy. Across the board, we have been conditioned with the perspective, looking at the same image, because there are other people that breathe the same air, Mm -hmm. live up under the same sunlight, you know, have all the same access to everything else that we have access to in nature, and they get it. And we somehow have been, you know, uh, laced with a virus, a viral uh, something that has caused us to not see this mm-hmm. thing as we should and then prevent us from being able to then engage the solution. And, and not just not engage the solution, but we choose to engage the very source of our problems as the solution, which I know you all were speaking about internally, 
But the, the, the external expression as a result of that internal reality is that we continue to go back <laughs> down the same road and go back to the source of our problems for a solution. Knowing or knowing or not knowing rather that the source of our problems benefits from us having the problem, almost like um, uh, a parasite or, uh, or a virus for real, you know. So it's, uh, it's interesting, and I'd like to hear you all's comment on that, that, that again, the source, the real core in it is that our solution has been made repugnant. We are repulsed by our solution. You know, uh, talk to me about that. What do you think? I'll, I'll, I'll start because I, I, I see where you're coming from, and I, and I see where you're going. And, again, I have to go back to what I've experienced, mm -hmm. what knowledge I've gained, and um, a researcher, Dr. DeGuer, um, that talks about the post-traumatic slave syndrome, the stuff that's in our DNA that causes us to act and react um, and not have self-worth and self-value for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I do think in the sense of an enemy it would be um, our, our captives having stolen us from our, our native land and having still to this day um, m making it difficult, almost impossible to, to make a way and we still seem to make a way out of no way. So, so that would be my, my, my feeling and us being aware. But if we aren't well, we can't be aware. We're walking, walking around, um, with blinders or, again, wanting to be accepted and part of this that doesn't suit us, in my opinion, needing to move away from the supposedly the, the, the norm and getting outside of the box. Mm -hmm. So that's just my feeling. At least I don't want to bypass you. You have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I feel that we live in a society that wants to keep us in the dark, wants to keep us in a trance, because that's kind of what continues to fuel the economy, you know? Um, if we are continually buying cheap food, and then we're continually putting money into those pockets because it's cheap for the food to be made. If we're continually going to doctors to get medicine to give us temporary, temporary cures for our illnesses, then it'll keep us sick and we can keep putting money in the pocket of, you know, the doctor. So um, in a way, it's like we are being attacked because in order for money to be made, we have to be in this trance or we have to be ill or we have to be ignorant to things. So I can understand both Dr. Baruch and um, both Denise and Dr. Pooch because at the end of the day, we have to be able to see beyond this trance that we've been trained, this, you know, this mindset that we've been trained to have. And um, we have to dig deeper within ourselves and face that enemy within ourselves because we still have the power and the ability to progress beyond any enemy. Mm -hmm. Very right. good. Yes. Dr. Pooch. Um, I, I I totally agree with uh, with both points. I I I I stand firm by by saying um, there is no enemy outside of ourself. And even though I agree with you, brother, that there are outside forces that um, uh, have have that are keeping us in this in these dark spaces, as Lisa said, in, in, in this dark frame of mind, in this low vibration. There's, it, the, the system definitely benefits from us being ignorant. Um, uh, like they say, ignorance is bliss. So people are, think that, you know, they're living the American dream and, you know, meanwhile they're 400 pounds. Uh, they think that this is life and, and this is the extent of their life. But once again, if you are to fight your enemy, uh, you have to realize, well, first of all, that uh, you do have an enemy. And if you do have an enemy, that fear, the fear of your enemy has to be conquered within yourself. It has to be, first, you, you, you're made aware of it in your consciousness that there is uh, you know, a, a, a presence that, that is suppressing uh, information, that is suppressing uh, your well-being. 
your your economic uh, well-being, your 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 uh, you know living conditions, your your health and, and and wellness and all of that. But if you are to transition and to change that, then it's you. Your enemy's not going to assist you. Your enemy disappears once you make that choice and stop shopping where your enemy has has set up a place for you to shop. <laughs> you know, because yeah. we have we have allies as well. If we have enemies, we also have allies. So I would I would say don't concentrate on your enemy, but concentrate on your allies because we're here to help you. We're here to give you all the solutions and uh, let you know that there there's there's hope out there. It's not uh, I would I would much rather uh, focus on the light than focus on the dark. Mm -hmm. So that's why I keep sh shifting from the enemy to you know, to, to, to the solution. So, you know, we, 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 we don't stay in the problem. We know what the problem is. Yes. We've, we've experienced the problem for hundreds of years yes. now, but we have to, we have to transition our thoughts and our vibrations into a solution. So, so we get past the enemy and there is no enemy. It's only allies. It's only love and light. Mm -hmm. We don't need any more research. We need action. Yeah. Action. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to jump in and, I, I agree with you. I agree with everything that both of you are saying. I just, I know, and I know you all are dealing with our people too out in California. California is a different vibrational frequency than, than Prince George's County. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the weather's nice, hey, take the rest of the day off, go to the beach, man, enjoy yourself. At least when I went there about 20 years ago, I was like, for real? Y'all are like leaving work? Yeah, the boss said it's a beautiful day out. You know, just go and enjoy the rest of the day. Like everybody, yeah, everybody. Like, okay, that's a little different, you know. So everybody's out at the beach and you know doing their thing. But and and of course, um, so in listening to what you're saying, I try to then figure out, okay, how am I going to grab? How am I going to grab Poochie and 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 Shaniqua and and Peanut and Earthquake off the corner. How am I going to grab them mm -hmm. and get their attention, along with you know the the corporate you know uh, uh, man and woman of melanated hue, you know how am I going to grab their attention to get them to see that the the ship that they're in is 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 sinking. So I I I'm going to use two I'm going to use two um, uh, parables analogies that. Um, that help me see what it is that you all are talking about and hopefully help you all see how it is that I view it. And again, we're not disagreeing. I just want to, I want to figure out how then to implement and incorporate what it is that you all are doing and talking about into what it is that I do and I'm talking about. So um, the first one is the scorpion and the frog. And is, is everybody familiar? Uh, no, I don't know that. Now. Okay, so. I'm going to do my best to uh, kind of bring some light to it then. Who isn't? You aren't? I'm not. I know Halise. Halise, you know, so Halise <laughs> just came out the womb yesterday. <laughs> She's like, okay, so the, the, the frog and the scorpion are sitting on the side of the lake, okay? And um, so the, the scorpion uh, says to the frog, hey, man, I'm trying to get to the other side of the lake. And uh, obviously, I don't have the capacity to swim, and you do, so... Why don't you give me a ride? I know you, you know, you can get over there and boom, boom, boom. And the frog says, you know, are you crazy? Are you out your mind? You and your family have been responsible for killing more people, more frogs. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring it into the people realm. <laughs> but you've been responsible for killing more frogs than anybody. Why would me in my right mind want to allow you to get on my back and me take you across the lake so that you can get to the other side? And, you know, the, the, the scorpion is clever in his wording and clever in his persuasiveness and is able to get the frog to begin to see his, his position. He says, hey, man. Why would I sting you knowing that I don't have the capacity to swim? I don't have the capacity to swim, so if I sting you out in the middle of this lake, Joe, I'm going to die. I'm not going to do that. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I'm just trying to get to my family. I'm trying to get to the other side so I can get to my family, man. And you, you can get me over there. 
you know. And of course, the frog begins to reason because it's, it, it makes sense. But why, why would you want to kill yourself? Because you're a scorpion. You got it made, you know. Y'all living at this level. We over here, you know. So why would you kill? Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe I, I need to do something good for somebody today. Mm. So maybe this will be the thing that I do that's good. And, you know, maybe I need to, because I'm getting tired of y'all getting bad-mouthed. Maybe you're the one. Maybe this is the scorpion that's going to change history. And now, all of a sudden, we're going to now be able to trust the scorpion. So the frog says, look, man, you promised me. I mean, for real, for real. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna sting me while I'm trying to take your butt across this lake. Nah, man. If I sting you, then not only do you die, but I die. I'm trying to get to the other side. I ain't gonna die. So the frog says, "All right, look, makes sense. You know what? Let's let's go and give this thing a shot. You know, but I got stuff I got to do, so we better do this quick." So the frog says, "All right, come on, get on my back. Let's rock and roll. Let's get across here." The frog is swimming. The scorpion. Is See, man, I ain't I ain't I ain't gonna do that to you. I ain't gonna mess. I ain't gonna kill you. You my, you my, you know, my transportation. This is my Uber, you know, across the <laughs> lake. I ain't going to kill you. And then, of course, in the middle of the lake, the scorpion stings the frog mm. and thus kills the frog and thus kills itself. And the frog says on its way to dying to the scorpion, yo, but you told me you weren't going to do this and you promised me that this wasn't going to happen and you made it make sense that if you did this, this, this was going to kill you too. Why? Why? Why would you do this? And the scorpion's response is, this is it's my nature. It's my nature. That's just how I do what I do when I do what I do. Your expectation, I was able to to convince you to have a different expectation of me. Mm. But this is the expectation that you should always have of me based on my nature. So I wanted to, I want to put that out there so that we understand that although what you were saying about there's no external, that this is an internal thing, it, it might be right. It might be just like, you know, we see folk doing things over and over again and they get the same bad results. And yes, it's, it's schizophrenia, but it's also, you know, belief that the scorpion ain't gonna kill him. No, but you, but you see, I'm what I'm what I'm saying is that we don't need to deal with the scorpion. That that the that the solutions are within ourselves and our own community and within our allies. The the problem with that with that allegory uh, uh, that you just uh, uh, set out uh, set forth is that the the frog went to his enemy, to his avowed enemy, his natural enemy. Uh, and and try to find a solution. Mm -hmm. The solution isn't with our enemy; it's with yeah. with, with our allies. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? If if so so it would be it would be a better story if uh, that that scorpion went to all the other scorpions and tried to uh, create some type of bridge, and they and they tied their tails together, and they all got across the bridge or the, the water or something like that, or you know that they worked with their own nature and the frogs worked with their own nature you see mm -hmm. the, the 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 frog really in this story the frog didn't even need the scorpion it's no. the scorpion that needed the frog right right but but then going back to the frog should have gone back to his support system to say right. you know what you know i know this scorpion has been doing this but okay let me run this by you and again that's the support system that's sure. your network of people mm -hmm. so you know because we know that people come out with products and services and things and charge people and do things so okay i'm going to create a network and a support system and say okay this thing is out how do you think it will impact me how do you think it'll affect me and then go with that network and get that network so you can have uh, some reasoning right because again that nature of the scorpion was the sting the frog right. Right. and then somebody else in the network an elder somebody would say well no let's take it back we know what the nature is so right. let them right. go on over there and keep moving. Let's keep moving right. and not, not try to be that, isolated. It's not to say that an enemy or the scorpion doesn't exist, but it's to say, you know, we're not going to find solutions by trying to change that enemy or scorpion because it, that's their nature. Ex exactly. Instead, we have to change ourselves. E right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Get right. our allies together, like you all are saying, in order to make bigger waves of these changes and because we're not going to find it with the scorpion and because in some cases we're so wanting acceptance still 
we so wanted to be a part of this system that's, that's not a part of us. Right. And that's that trauma. And that's why he let the and that's scorpion that, on his exactly, back. Exactly, exactly. Okay, we want to, we want to, our, our, our nature being that, okay, we know that people can be humane and sane and we see what's going on with this system that we're, politics that we're doing. It's insanity. It's insanity. So we have to have the support. We have to be aware and be well enough to be aware so we can think. Because if we're sick, we can't think. If we're right. sick, we you know want to be with or like someone. We see that in the media. We see that in the schools. We see that everywhere. So the wellness is, is, and I, is, is key. And I, I, I want to reiterate as well, like people really, we need to understand that the frog did not need the scorpion. That's true. The, the frog did not need, it's the scorpion that needs our participation exactly. in this system. Exactly. And once we, once we stop, because it's almost, in my mind, I say, well, what I can do, I'm not going to get out and march with Black Lives Matter. What we can do, stop buying one product. We all say, let's stop buying one product. We stop going somewhere. Let's do, that would be my solution mm -hmm. to it. We don't need that. How can we, every, if I had everybody come to my class and commit to coming to class and paying in advance, then I know I could depend on that. You know, whatever you have, so let's support each other. Let's start collaborations. Let's form partnerships so we can work together and get over the stuff that we can't or we don't or we won't. Because mm -hmm. we're fueling the same system exactly. that are built to kill us. Mm -hmm. So. I it's We're supporting it. Crazy. We're yeah. It's, it's, it's a huge yeah. Mind. So. Well, okay. I, I, I'm, I really appreciate the dialogue, and I think that's good. I think what you all are saying is, uh, is the, is in line with the thinking and my thinking in particular. I, I just want us to be mindful of the fact that the scorpion is clever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I let you know that that something that you already know, but those in the audience who may not know, the scorpion has made himself to not look like a scorpion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He has made himself to appear as an ally. Mm. And even though when you, you know, using a, 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 an a example in, in stories like The Wizard of Oz, when you, when you pull back the curtain, you realize that You've been the scorpion the whole time. Mm. This has been the scorpion the whole time, and I I wanna I want us to you know as we as we come to we're now at the at the top of the hour, but I wanted I want to talk about how we engage the solution, and I want to talk about how we stay out of the negative and stay out of the enemy and and all of that. Although I do think there has to be, you know, that it's it's like. You know, how would we not then get light if you don't have negative and positive energy? You know, you, you get you get the light when you when you bring that negative and positive energy and, and, and that person has that aha moment. Because if all they exist in is the positive and they never experience the negative, they never come to the conclusion that that maybe the positive that they thought was positive isn't quite as positive as they thought it was. Am I with y'all? Yeah, with and, okay. and I, I, yeah. I, I, I hear that. And for me, the negative becomes the solution, not just staying in the negative. Yes. What, what, what is the solution? Now, now I got another allegory. Thank you for that word, Dr. Pooch, as uh -huh. I was calling it two other things. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've heard about the story of the, of the dog and the nail? No. No. Oh man, I'm like a teacher. <laughs> y'all get y'all pens and pads. Out. Um, there's the there's a story of the guy. He's he's driving down in the in the sticks of Mississippi, and it's late. It's dark. It's pitch dark. There's no light. He catches a flat tire, and uh, he can't see in order to change his tire. The only thing he's got working for him is he can hear this dog howling. So he figures, okay, dog howling must be at a house, must be where some people are. Maybe somebody can come up here with their, their pickup truck and give me some light so I can change my spare tire. So he starts following or, or listening for the sound of the dog and walking in the direction of the howling dog. Over and over and over again, I'm supposed to howl like the dog does in order to make the, the story true and authentic. But y'all are gonna have to just imagine the howl of the dog, right? 
So the dog is howling, and uh, the man continues to walk. He finds his way. He finally gets up to what appears to be the house where the dog is howling. He knocks on the door. Guy comes to the door and says, uh, yeah, you know, what's up? You know, and, and he says, I, I, man, I, my car, my car is, you know, up at the top of the hill here. And um, I'm trying to I'm trying to get it started. Well, I'm trying to get uh, my tire replaced and repaired so that I can get on down the road. And um, so the guy, you know, hey, man, it's dark outside. You know, you're going to probably wait till Johnson opens up in the morning. He's got a lift and he's got, you know, he's got everything you need. He can change your tire in the morning. And, uh, you know, well, it's not that far from morning now, so maybe I can wait. So, cool. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you, you know, appreciate you letting me know this information. I'll just wait for him to open up. So then the guy, you know, be closes or begins to close the door, and the, and the other guy's cars broke down on the hill, begins to walk away, and then he turns around in that Columbo fashion. At least you wouldn't know what that means. <laughs> in that Columbo that fashion. And he says, oh, hold, 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 hold on, sir. Uh, I, I got a question. I couldn't help but notice that there's this dog howling seemingly in your yard, you know, and uh, what, what is that? And he said, yeah, that's, that's my dog. He's in the backyard. I said, well, well, why is the dog howling? And he said, oh, <laughs> dog is, it, the dog keeps rolling over on the nail. I said, well, well, why does the dog roll over on the <laughs> nail? So the guy says to him, well, I guess it just doesn't hurt bad enough. Yet. <laughs> wow. And, you know, leaving, walking away, of course, now with this thought on his mind, you know, of course, we reflect on the reality of the people mm -hmm. in our community. I, if we don't have that hot stove, that that negative, what I, so I equate the hot stove to the negative energy. If you don't have that negative energy experience to cause you to then to move into a positive space because pain is a great motivator. Mm -hmm. It's a great motivator. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you experience, I've got, I've been working out and uh, I've got a personal trainer and it's, a, I don't know that it motivates me in the right direction because I keep going back to her, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a great motivator. And uh, we look up today and I think that our people almost need that that negative that that motivation and maybe maybe looking at the pain as a negative is the wrong thing then that pain is a good thing mm -hmm. can't convince me of that though but you you know that pain then in the story of the dog rolling over on the nail and the analogy of the people that we look like happening to continue to go back to the same situation over and over again doing the same thing over and over again going beyond schizophrenia now this is just self loathing this is just self-hatred yeah. you know at some point s people get to the rock bottom and they say hold on it's got to be something better than this it's got to be something I, I can't do this anymore you know that a well, person wakes up go ahead dr Pooh. well that's it that's that's the thing i i, I in, in in my opinion i think is uh uh people want people innately believe that 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 God is good. Life is good. Everything should be good. Of course, there is that negative to, to counteract that um, within our own. I'm, I'm going to go back to that with with within our perception of what uh, of, of, of what the, the 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 problem is. A lot of people have convinced themselves either whether it be through religion or through whatever it may be that uh Life is supposed to be a struggle. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be a challenge. It's supposed to be hard. We're supposed to uh, not be comfortable. People have come to this exception within their own reality that this is life. Mm -hmm. They haven't yet come to the realization that life could be something different. That life could be a beautiful thing. It could be full of ease and, and health and wellness. Mm -hmm. you, 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 do you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, so it, it's you know the 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 dog for in 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 your in in this next allegory you know he, the 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 pain was part of his reality. He accepted that pain to be part of his reality, exactly. and and, and his howling was just you know that was his sole means of communication. He didn't know that there was a, a even a solution to take that nail out of his back, or probably he his 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 uh, paws couldn't reach his nope. back. That you support know? wasn't there. Yeah. Right. That, that, that community support wasn't there. So he didn't have, he, all he had was the negative to go on. He, he didn't have any solution, any light to give him uh, 
something to take him out of that frame of mind. And unfortunately, with our people, uh, all too often, we're stuck in this frame of mind where this is our reality. We have always been struggling here on Earth. It's always been hard. Uh, we came from Africa where there was nothing, and it was it was it's been poor and you know dirt poor. We didn't have anything over there, and we came over here and we didn't have anything. It's been you know we accepted a, a, a history that was told to us, which is a false history, history you know, and um, we we we've internalized it. So there. Therefore, there will be nothing more than that pain because that's all we we that's the reality that we've chosen to accept. And, and going into I, I agree with 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 that into just looking at the body and how the body responds. Pain is the last resort to say, OK, well, you hadn't listened to me. You hadn't really acknowledged what I'm, I'm saying or you, you know, moving in a direction that you shouldn't because there's some pain that. We, we need, we all got here through pain, most of us, and you wonder how that we all get here. You know, it was, it was painful birthing um, my, my sons, but they made it and I made it, and we, we continue to do that. So really looking at that nail, again, being there, and we as a people feeling like, I'm so used to it being this way, this is just normal. It's just normal that I'm going to be sick, I'm going to feel sick, and there's no way I'm going to be or feel any better because you in internalize that to a point that it's a part of who you, who you are. And if you don't have any examples around you, yes. you don't have that whole household, yes. the mother, the sister, the brother, the uncle, everybody's diabetic, everybody's on drugs, nobody goes, you know, you don't have that example, then you don't have anything to say. Well, it could be different. I, it, it could be a 77-year-old that has two businesses and works and goes and stands upright and, and can work out and can do what she does. And a 90-year-old that's still working and, and, and vibrant, if you don't have that example, then how can you see your way out of it and not just still stay in it? And so that perception, is, that perception is so important, too, because I understand what Dr. Baruch is saying in terms of, you know, polarity and balance, like, there's no good without evil, there's no negative without positive, there's no pain without like pleasure, like you have to understand the balances, but perception is such a key factor in that because where life is difficult, it is often as difficult as you make it based on mm -hmm. how you're perceiving it. Just mm -hmm. like you said, challenges are also opportunities, but it depends on if you're viewing it as a challenge or as an opportunity. And I mean, with the story, um, I mean, I understand that definitely getting to a as human beings like getting to a low or you know seeing the negative effects it has on another another person can oftentimes change your actions because you'll say oh my goodness like this happened to them i don't want that to happen to me but i think even even possibly even more powerful that than that is um the testimony of living well because mm -hmm. when people like you said when if the dog could see another dog that's running around exuberant and happy mm -hmm. and joyous mm -hmm. then maybe that dog would say wait a second why isn't that dog getting you just messed up about? by this nail like <laughs> you know but just move over a little bit <laughs> because there are times where we might see our family member die from diabetes or and we'll still accept the fact we're like well i'm gonna get it too but if you see that your family member is 60 but looks 30 you know in shape or living well still flexible still able to do all these things you might say well what is it that they're doing so that i can yes. be more like that you know and then uh if, if i can uh, if i could jump in on another point that denise uh, uh made the uh, in terms of our body inflammation for example inflammation uh has a negative connotation in our society everybody throws it around uh, i wrote a book uh, it's called inflammation nation uh, to explain to on a on a really simple level what inflammation is, and inflammation is a great thing. Without inflammation, um, we wouldn't heal. You die, so, right? Yes, right. So, so yes. inflammation is yes. a great, great thing, but it becomes a problem when inflammation is chronic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the, the, like you're saying, the the, the negative is going to be there. The pain is going to be there. But it's when that pain becomes chronic every single day. That's when it, that's when disease, that's what we call disease. Yeah. When it's chronic inflammation. So it's a chronic condition. So we, th there's, there's, there's a way out of diabetes. So you can reverse diabetes. So that inflammation doesn't have to be a chronic condition. You know, and a lot of people have accepted only the disease 
and not the passing of this inflammation and using it as a sign that uh, there's something wrong going on in our body and we can correct it. So um, as I'm, I'm wanting to stimulate and agitate this conversation, I, uh, so I, I don't want you all to get it twisted. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not wanting to defend the weak position but I want us to have the conversation that opens up our mind to the reality of what the real deal is and, and, and making sure that we're, we're cognizant of all that is present. Um, a part of this conversation, two, two other pieces that I wanna talk about, one is the power to define. As long as the power to define good and evil, right and wrong, bad and whatever, mm -hmm. as long as it is not in, the, in our hands, mm -hmm. And as long as it stays in the hands of the scorpion, and the scorpion continues to define things as he does such that it benefits what it is that he desires, then you know we're gonna, we're gonna see, it's gonna be difficult to get somebody to open up their eyes and see that, um, you know, that eating something healthy is more beneficial and and is actually more rewarding and and tastes better mm -hmm. and is so much mm -hmm. there's so <laughs> much positive and good in it but you and i all four of us know that if you tell somebody look uh, all the healthy food is over here on this table and all of the traditional uh black american soul food is on this table you all choose whichever you would like you know that that fried chicken would be like, it'd be like roaches on some whatever. And it'd be like, it, we, we, have this, we have this compulsion, we have this, this need, and almost like taking our place. You know, we, we know about the, uh, the miseducation of the Negro mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how, you know, we, we, we would not go through the front door. In fact, we would go to the back door. And if there is no back door, we cut one there so that we can go through the back door. Mm -hmm. Almost like we have been conditioned mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. the scorpion to always not only accept, but to expect that which is subpar, that which mm -hmm. is not, not appropriate for human consumption. So in, in our work to, to elevate a person to a point where this makes sense, to elevate a, a, a person to a, a point where they can begin this self-help journey, we, we have to, we have to give, uh, we have to at least recognize that somebody has redefined what is good and what is bad. You don't see broccoli commercials here on the East Coast. I don't, Dr. Pooch, I'm not sure whether y'all got them <laughs> on that side, but they don't advertise kale and broccoli, and they don't advertise the benefits of seaweed, but Lord have mercy, do they advertise what they call soft drinks. The mm -hmm. audacity mm -hmm. to call mm -hmm. an, an, an acid rate. drink Greater a rate. soft, soft drink. drink. Wow. And then to, to take food and, and supposedly put their hands to it and, that, and now refine the food. So now the refined foods, which we probably prefer to call processed, but these refined foods are now, you know, it's what gets advertised. What doesn't get advertised is, you know, the foods that really give us health. And so if somebody is programming our thinking, if they have the power to define and they're programming our thinking, then they will cause us to not even give consideration to the, the positive because they think they are giving consideration to the positive because that's what they've been told. You know, so how do we how do we overcome the disinformation campaign that has put us in a space where everything that is good looks bad, everything that is bad looks good? I, I, I'm going to speak to that because I feel that we we do that, and um, you know, I would say it has to be person by person because if we look at it on a large scale, for me, it becomes overwhelming because I'm talking about from the educational system to the food system to the housing system, every system. So first we pick which one we're gonna work with so we, you know, we can be focused in, in, that, in that area. And for us, um, again, Jewel Thais Williams, my mentor, my shero, my role model, the founder and owner of the Village Health Foundation has done so much. She had a vegan restaurant and in her vegan restaurant, um, people that would normally not come and try vegan food did. 
So they were able to experience and see, you know, through her making it affordable, that this is food that does taste good. Mm-hmm. So through experience, again, through experience and through, through sharing, that this is a way that you can, you can get this and you can try it. And we know everybody is not going to latch on. Everybody's mm-hmm. not going to try it. Everybody's going to, some people are going to say, well, I'm just going to um, ride and die with my chicken or, or whatever. So we have to take who we can take, build on that, and, and keep moving. And I've, I've seen that and, and, and experienced her, you know, working with community and, and working to be able to do that. So that would be how I see it. And I think that's why education is so important. We have to, and, and this is, I want to I wanna segue into your, your books, Dr. Pooch, but this is why education is so critical because if we allow someone else to define for us what is good and what is bad, knowing that they, have, they don't have our best interest at heart, mm-hmm. not only not having our best interest at heart, but seemingly have committed themselves to erasing us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when I say us, I think we know who we're talking about, but us is like a, it's like sometimes a moving target. I, I don't get it. But I know that us, we, wherever the us is, we's at the front. There <laughs> we might be some other front. folk in there. The, 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 the net might have scooped up some other folk, but we's the ones. We're the target. And, um, you know, so, so taking our, uh, our responsibility and empowering our mm-hmm. community, empowering. empowering our youth, is very critical, and uh, I want you to you to talk about your books and what motivated you to uh, to to write your book, uh, Doctor Pooch, so that we would then be able to um, see whether we might have lost him here, so that we can we can have that information. Um, but we're, we're gonna we, we want to know we want to know what it is that we have to do in the process of redefining um in the process of redefining oh. <laughs> that's why we need an engineer in there so that they can until we get him back on i can speak to what we've done and are doing um again the village health foundation clinic has been around in the community for 16 years um, and it's been funded through the wealth of the founder and owner to provide services to the community where literally people would come in and bring a loaf of bread for service. Uh, people would do a donation for service. And I'm talking not broken down chairs, uh, raggedy, I'm talking about a state of the art beautiful clinic. Mm-hmm. And we did health workshops, wellness workshops. And these wellness workshops were doing, done seasonally based on the season and how our body functions and how we can work. And again, it was about empowering giving information, providing resources, and bringing in community people that are in the, in and doing the work and how we support each other mm-hmm. and how we provide. So it was a full program. It was donation, no, no, no fee. And um, so we, we, we gave a wide range of what it looked like on all levels because there's so many different levels mm-hmm. that it, it needs to be done. Right. So that's something that um, I'm, I'm sure is being done, but it's not being promoted. It's not being publicized. And again, the work that you're doing here, phenomenal. Um, I've seen the workshops when I've come to visit. I, again, frequent and come to the workshop. So it, ha- it has to start there and it has to start. We have social media, um, ways to use social media through, you know, Internet radio, through Instagram, through, through whatever to get the word out. And I, and I think that is being done. Um, mm-hmm. In a, in a way, but it's inch by inch is mm-hmm. a cinch. Mm-hmm. There we go. There we go. I, and I, um, so I, I've got a, I don't have an, a, an, another allegory, but I do have a mm-hmm. question. And, and maybe I deal too much in what's outside and not enough in what's inside, except that I find that what's outside influences what's inside mm-hmm. and probably vice versa. Um, who do we trust? And I, I want to be specific, you know. Do, do we trust the government? Do we trust the educational institutions? Do we trust the, uh, the Department of Agriculture, which goes, goes back to government again? Do, do we trust the, um, the you know, there, there's, there's so much that falls media. up on the government. <laughs> oh, okay, great, great. That's an easy no. But uh, do we trust the media? And, and my last one, which is very, 
very difficult for us to sometimes talk about because the 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 like I said the scorpion has changed how he looks and uh, do we trust religion because there's got to be, at some point, there has to be, you know, you talked about coming amongst yourselves. Well, who is us, and who do we trust? Who are the us that we're talking about? Is it the us that are just being attacked, or is it those of us that are not only being attacked, or maybe even not being attacked, but recognize the work that needs to be done and are doing the work? Who who do we trust, Dr. Pooch? Uh, well... I think that uh, to answer your question, we, tr we can trust ourselves. And when we, 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 we say self, I mean with a capital S. Uh, so our higher self, that, that, that God particle within it. And, and not even a particle because it's the whole, it's, it's God's whole presence. It's not only a part of it. So it's our higher consciousness. When we, you can go to the uh, educational uh, uh, system, go to the government system. You can go to meet uh, mass media, uh, uh, you know, corporate media, etc. All of these institutions, the, the 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 military, every they're about self-preservation. Okay, if it, it, I was I was talking recently with somebody and we said, okay, if if there was a national threat against the United States of America, and the government had to choose between preserving its own people, the people that were already in the government and you know active members of the government, or the people of America. Who do you think they would choose to be to be to to get erased? Right? To, if there was a bomb and there was a national, you know, serious threat that that, that people, you know, would would the the the, the, the humanity would, would would be extinct. Who do you think, us being in a so called democracy, who do you think that our government would choose to survive this uh, this uh, uh, apocalypse. All of the people that look like you and me. <laughs> that, oh, they, no, uh, what, what I said is who, who, would, who would they choose to survive? Would they choose themselves? Would they choose that, that the government survives and then they can reestablish the people because the government has to, you know, the government is for the people, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting question. If the government is for the people, would, the, would they choose that the people die? And then there's no government, and then there's a you know a, a, a anarchy, right? Because there's no government. Or would the would the government choose that the that that the government survives and all the people die, right? And 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 then there's only a government and no public to to govern. You see, I said I said that facetiously. The government's already choosing themselves, right? Now. Right. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. It's all about self-preservation. The government already has bunkers and, and things in, in, in place for, 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 for such an apocalypse, okay? Mm -hmm. So they, they've already chosen self-preservation. So when it comes to uh, the answering your question, we choose ourselves. You have to trust yourself, your higher self, and know that that answer is within you. The qualifier, though, that you're using is key because the separation between yourself and your higher self is, is a long distance, brother. There's yes, a, a long distance between yes. yourself and your higher self because yourself is is almost a creation of of them. They they created this thing because like like we st stated earlier in the conversation, we I'm, folks are not at the at the maternity ward giving birth to criminals. Right. No, these are being created, manufactured, whether it be intentionally. The, 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 all of the consumables are creating this. So whether it's food mm -hmm. or television mm -hmm. or radio mm -hmm. or some mm -hmm. other media, the, this, the, these media, and, and you, you brought up vaccination. We know that if I'm going to trust somebody to put something in my veins, I'm sorry, I'm not trusting the government. Exactly. I'm not about but, to, I mean, that's obviously the outcome is worse. We're looking at autism and Alzheimer's and we're looking at the damage that is being done to the endocrine system of men and women that's causing us to many times not know or, well, anyway, that's another conversation. But <laughs> we're trying to figure out stuff that somebody else is doing to us and we can't figure out the source of it and or, or, or how it's happening, but you know, we keep on 
rolling over on the nail thinking that well one day it's gonna get better but the, but but the reason that if if there is this outside source mm-hmm. right that's that's doing this to us intentionally mm-hmm. you know, the reason for that is for their own self-preservation mm-hmm. so that means that they are a parasite absolutely yes okay absolutely a yes. fungus a parasite a cancer they, Can- it, yeah cancer it, it, it can only live within an acidic environment so that's why that's why I, I I stress that once we choose alkaline, we choose alkaline thoughts, we choose alkaline foods. It's an individual decision. Nobody's going to spoon feed you. You know, even the 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 the, the doctor is not going to uh, cook for you. You know, he can even even if your doctor is a holistic doctor, he's not going to get in your kitchen. He's not going to go shopping for you. It's up to you to make that decision and choose a life for yourself to the standard that your own consciousness can 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 fathom you and know, that's it, why it's important to elevate the consciousness exactly and Absolutely. yes i and i i totally agree and you mentioned religion mm. um and that's another topic um oftentimes i'll get asked by people am i a christian because with yoga there's chanting and mantras and mudras and different things that people don't understand but as they understand because i teach then they become unafraid Mm-hmm. And um, I say that I am a human, but I am a spiritual being having a human experience. Mm-hmm. So, a- again, when you look at some of the establishments that um, are part of um, the opportunity, when you look at the foods, when you look at the teachings, um, it's a lot. <laughs> and that's that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> well, let me say something, <laughs> because I believe that it is a, ne- a necessity to in order to get a people to where they had, had, have you seen the movie um, Birth of a Nation? I hadn't seen it yet. OK. Yeah. Did you see the movie The Book of Eli? I did. Dr. Pooch, either of those. Have you seen? No, it? no, neither. Halise? I've seen The Book of Eli. OK. Two, two things that came out real strong in both of those movies was the power of religion. Yeah. And we need to control this religion mm. Mm. so that the people, I'm mm. going to I'm gonna paraphrase. Mm. We need to control the, the religion so that you can keep the people subdued. Mm. Mm-hmm. Call we, we need to keep the people subdued, so we're going to give them this perception of this thing that's outside of themselves, mm. that's greater than themselves, mm. that gives them then the obligation to do right by this thing that we are creating that doesn't really have any power. The only power that it has is the power that the people give to it. I'm still Control. paraphrasing. <laughs> And and it's got the people in a you know it's hard to get past that hurdle. Yes, See, because very hard. first off, you got to get a person to accept that. You mean they've been lying? You mean all this time? Wait, 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 wait. What I believe to be the truth, what I accepted as the ultimate, ultimate, was a lie. So what is then? And it's and because your backdrop doesn't quite have the the. The, the filament in the bulbs that you need so that it can give illumination to the real truth have burnt out because they've been trying to give light to it for so long and you've just been caught up in this fictitious lie. Oh, man, it's, it's tough. But it, it, it is such an essential part of the campaign to, to enslave a people. I, 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 let me, I, I want to jump in because a lot of people have demonized religion. Uh, uh, you know, I... Uh, I think that um, religion religion is a great thing. Religion has always been um, a part of human culture and, and, and human uh, uh, history. If you read any of the religious philosophies, they always stress the uh, presence of God within yourself. And that's why I always revert back to the answer is within you, because God is, is, is within you. If he uh, breathed his spirit, into you then you are god individualized okay uh you just haven't realized that yet so and and by you i mean me as well you know so so um we haven't realized that we are gods individualized we are all a part mm-hmm. of this magnanimous creation where we're, we're we're a part of it 
uh, the thoughts that we have internally reflect in outward manifestations. So the, the, the thing is with religion, religion, whether you're talking about the Torah, whether you're talking about the, uh, the, the Bible, the, you know, uh, what we know is the Bible, uh, what we know is the Quran, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, all of these uh, um, uh, holy books, they all teach us mm -hmm. that this, this not, first of all, to eat right, all of, this, all mm -hmm. of the books, uh, mm -hmm. even some of the books like the Old, uh, Old Testament mm -hmm. uh, talk about uh, eat, eating a vegan diet, okay? So a lot of these Christians uh, eating the soul food mm -hmm. that we call soul food, I like to say that it wasn't right. soul food, S-O-U-L, it was S-O-L-E, okay? It was the only food that we had available, mm -hmm. okay? So it's, it's not, this is not your culture to be eating uh, you know, pig and all of these things. This is not your culture. Read your Bible and, and, your Bible and, and you'll see that there, you know, it's not within your culture to be eating uh, certain kinds of foods, okay? So if we go back to true religion and, and actually read the, the books that we, even though they may have been changed and, 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 and uh, the translations may have been lost here and there, uh, the essence is still in all of those books. And all of those books say that your condition can't change unless you change what's within you. Mm -hmm. That God is closer to you than your own jugular vein. All of these things is, are stating that you have uh, that God potential in you, that you can change your reality, that religion is, is here uh, to inform you, to bring you to a higher level of consciousness and elevation. And... It's, it's not a negative thing. So a lot of people have demonized it, especially as of late with, uh, you know, people coming into consciousness. Uh, they, they like to say, well, you know, I don't deal with Jesus and all the, you know. Okay, you can, you can accept that, but know the truth about what Jesus, the so-called Jesus or whatever, whoever you like to, you know, uh, whatever name you would like to use for him, uh, for that Christ or Messiah figure, uh, that he was only trying to uh, tell you that, it's no external uh, person that can bring you to paradise. Paradise and the kingdom is, in, is within you, and it's your choice, and it's actually your inheritance. So it's, it's ours. It's only up to us to make that decision as to whether or not we want it. Right. Okay, I, 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 and I agree with what you're saying, and I, and I think it's appropriate that we draw the, the, the line of this. Uh, separation and religion in my estimation has been the thing that has re erased spirituality a and I, I I'm so glad you you speaking to that because because I, I think what our brother dr. Pooch is speaking about is spirituality, spirituality instead of religiosity yeah this if that's re a word religion <laughs> I, I, I think religion has been infiltrated by the by that that virus because now religion is doing things and we're looking at what religion is is doing and finding appropriate and accept if my grandmother were alive today and she saw some of these 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 fools in the pulpit leading these people down the road of him having a, a helicopter and a and a learjet or two and a compound where he can have his house and and all of his family members can have their own house on his compound um, no, 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 that, that, that grandpa would have got the shotgun and said, oh, no, we, we ain't going to let nobody destroy the word of God like this. We're going to go and get rid of it. This man <laughs> done got the devil up inside of him. So, so I, I, I think I agree with everything that you're saying. I just wouldn't use the word religion. I right. would well, use well, well, religion, religion got a bad rap. Like, so for example, I was raised in the, in the Islamic faith, right? Mm -hmm. So reading the Quran. It, there, there was a point in the Prophet Muhammad's uh, uh, life where uh, the Quran was revealed to him and it said that your religion was made perfect, okay? So that the, the religion in itself by divine creed is, is, is perfect, okay? That is true spirituality. Religion in terms of all of the writs and rites and all of that, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's great for humanity. The fact is, it's not religion that's corrupting people. It's people that are corrupting people. It's these false preachers and, you know, pastors and imams and all of these, you know, uh, people that are using religion to brainwash people for their own means, right? So it's not the religion, in essence, that's, that's, that's evil. It's the, 
uh, people's own minds that are evil and use any any tool that they have to control. So it's it's been used as a means to control, control. people, mm. right? But mm. it's not in itself uh, inherently evil. It's there for the benefit of humanity and for the elevation of uh, of our consciousness and our spiritual salvation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I I agree with you. I agree with you. I think that's a, that's a fair uh, conclusion on on that subject matter. We're talking now about the the book of Dr. Pooch. We've mm-hmm. talked about the Bible. Now there's no, a new chapter being written, Dr. Pooch. You're writing it now. Tell us about your books. What inspired uh, you to write them, and uh, and and what? Give us some of the titles, and and what you expect to happen uh, from from the writings of of your pieces. Okay. Um, well, uh, thank you first of all for giving me the time to talk about it. Uh, it's called the Get Well Johnny book series. Uh, I started off, uh, first of all, I, I, I was trained as a holistic health coach. I started taking on clients one by one, and uh, it, it just didn't work for me. It was too slow. I'm part of the hip hop culture. Yeah, we want to talk to everybody at the same time, you know, like they say, at the same damn time. So <laughs> we, we want to speak to everybody. And, um, that that was really my motivation. I, I always saw myself on the world stage, really, uh, uh, you know, like like hip hop does. We want to talk to everybody. So uh, I used my own knowledge and uh, experience in hip hop and writing um, to create a book series. I was already Dr. Seuss, as I stated uh, early on in this uh, 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 show. Uh, I I had that that pseudonym, that character within me, and I had already come to the to the realization that at some point in my life I would write a book, uh, a children's book, and um, uh, I didn't know what it would be. When I start, when I started in health and wellness, I thought that this would be the perfect match to bring uh, children's health-based curriculum or, or or books to the market because it was simply non-existent. Um, now, in terms of the books, I covered every health-oriented, holistic. Uh, topic imaginable from sugar from nature is always fine superfoods are super fun whole foods are better um, uh, it started from seed uh, even uh, uh, emotional uh, um, uh, books like dealing with bu- with bullying in a holistic way so uh, I covered every holistic topic imaginable the reason I focused on kids was because I want the world to be a better place. And for the world to be a, a better place, we have to focus on our children. We have mm-hmm. to invest in our future. If, there's no, uh, res- if there are no resources for our children, then we could just call it quits and we could you know, cut the line right here. There will be no future uh, that's sustainable for life. So if, we, if we're able to train our children to be able to take care of us uh, when we're in need, Otherwise, they're just going to throw us in, 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 the, you know, in the old folks' home, and mm-hmm. we're going to have uh, you know, our chronic illnesses, and, and we, won't have, you know, we, we won't know what to do. But my goal was to create little health coaches mm-hmm. all throughout the nation mm-hmm. that are going to read ingredient labels, hold their parents uh, accountable mm-hmm. to the knowledge that they learned through these books. And um, uh, uh, every book, I set it up in a holistic way. I start every book. Uh, with a note to parents to address the issues in adult language. So whatever the topic is, I, 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 I cover that in adult language. And then there's the story form. It's really simplified. It's, it's illustrated. It's fun. It's, it, it's everything a children's book should be. Uh, there's even a cadence to it, a rhyme scheme, because kids learn through song and, and, and dance and play. So there's, there's that aspect to it, too. And then to take it a step further, I added recipes and interactive exercises to further uh, drive the, the, the point home because kids also learn through touching and feeling and smelling and, and tasting. And um, of course, the kids aren't the ones with the money and the credit cards shopping. Okay? It's, their, it's their parents. So not only do I have to train the kids, but I have to retrain the adults. So that's what I mean by holding the adults accountable because the adults are going to participate uh, in, in, in using the Get Well Johnny uh, book series because there's recipes. So they're going to they're gonna learn a different way to cook. They're going to learn to use ingredients that they've uh, they, 
but perhaps haven't used prior to uh, uh, that introduction uh, to those uh, uh, foods. So it's a holistic process. It's, it's taking children and adults and putting them together so they can hold each other accountable to the, to the knowledge that they've learned. It's taking um, uh, images, it's taking um, uh, words and, and fusing that together uh, to, to create an experience. And uh, it hits all parts of the human consciousness, uh, touch, feel, taste, ev everything. So uh, that was my motivation. It's essentially, it's a 12 part series. Unfortunately, while I was working on developing this series, I was only able to develop six books because my illustrator, uh, Cousin Dave, passed away uh, from an aggressive form of cancer. We were literally in the hospital working on some of the last books, uh, book uh, five and six. Uh, we, were, we, we were in the hospital. He was already diagnosed and the cancer was spreading. Um, I choose to believe uh, uh, and, 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 and know wholeheartedly that I could have helped this man. But unfortunately, with these institutions, we're not able to administer certain types of medicines in uh, these hospitals or while he's on uh, being monitored, and, you know, hooked up to the IV and things like that. Uh, I wasn't able to get him out. So uh, it, I only developed six books and I'm, I'm currently developing the uh, subsequent six uh, that will be uh, coming out shortly. So uh, that's 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 that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And where do we where do we get copies of the book? How do we uh, access it? You could get the copies everywhere. You can go to my website, drpooch.com, D R Pooch P O O C H dot com. So D R P O O C H dot com. You can go to We Buy Black, since we are talking to our people. Uh, we can go to we buy black dot com and uh, you can uh, go to backslash Dr. Pooch D R P O O C H and you'll find my page there. If you shop on Etsy dot com you can find it there if you shop on amazon or kindle you can find it there so uh whatever behooves you it's, it's everywhere mm -hmm. okay oh, also in the dc area uh recently uh i was just there last week and uh, the book is now in sankofa bookstore right across the street from howard university mm -hmm. okay great great, great 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 thank you thank you sister denise what you got going on? We got a couple minutes. What you want to share with us before we, we get off of the air after closing out a really powerful show? Well, I just wanted to thank you, first of all, thank you. for um, receiving my energy and, and bringing me in. Um, and I wanted to, to close out with um, just making a statement that I talked a little about yoga, and yoga is a lifestyle for me. Mm. Um, I created a movement called K-Yogo, which is Kemetic Kundalini Yoga. And my idea is that wherever you are, you'll stop and strike a yoga pose. I've created a line of yoga wear for us, K-Yoga. Yoga is not a religion, and I share that. So uh, hopefully before I leave, I can maybe do a community class here. I do that from time to time. And I did talk about being trained by uh, an activist that um, has a yoga for youth program. In mm -hmm. that program, we go into detention centers and work with youth so they have another vehicle in order to work with when they get out. So this program I'm taking to South Africa to work with the black yogi community there to spread, spread this wealth. So I'd like to invite everybody, if you haven't done yoga, just take a nice deep breath in and a nice deep breath out and you can say you've done yoga because yoga is breath, breath is life. So again, I'm grateful for this technology. I'm grateful for my life and all the mentors and everybody in my circle because yoga just means union. It's to join and collect everything. Kundalini means awareness, to become aware of the surroundings, aware of those outside forces that create this straw, this ease in the inside source. So again, I'd like to close with um, a tune that was shared by a coordinator at a Skid Row walking program. I have a walking program that I do with elders at the largest housing facility for elders. And this is a song that she created called Diabetes. So I'm going to do my best and, and shout it out and share it so we can share it with those that may um, be experiencing, not have, be experiencing this dreadful dis-ease 
call diabetes. Dr. Pooch got the back, you know, he got your backup, right? He's you got, got you got my backup. So you can give me some drum beat. Give hop. me some drum yep. beat. Give me some drum beat. So <laughs> they told that sugar don't come around here. Don't want to see your face. You better disappear. If your glucose is high, grain and veggies want to try and beat it, die, beat it. You better walk, you better do what you can. Don't want to see no blood, don't see no macho woman and man. Your prank is, is tough, better do what you can. Diabetes. But you want to be bad, diabetes, diabetes. No one wants to be defeated. Showing how healthy, strong you can be. It really matters, type versus pre-diabetes. Thank you, Jennifer, <laughs> for allowing me to share your words. Diabetes, family, diabetes community, we love you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what's up. Well, uh, again, I thank you. And I, I just want to, I want to close on a, on, a, on a piece that um, I believe is, um, I think is relevant with regard to chronic disease. And, and before I do that, I'm, I'm going to let my, my co-host, my co-engineer, my co, you know, person in the studio here uh, share with us any thoughts she might have because she's always so full of words to share. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I definitely want to say thank you to our guests that we have in the studio and on Skype today. Um, the work that you all are doing is severe and very important and um, very urgent. So it's always amazing to be connected with individuals like yourself. And it's, I'm in the process of figuring out what I want to do for my life. So it's always just a blessing to be in this type of network so I could see what other people are doing and figure out where I fit in to continue to do the same um, in terms of uplifting our community and just making changes in the, in the lives and perception of, of our people. So definitely thank you, uh, Dr. Pooch, and thank you, Ms. Denise Davidson, for joining us today. Thank you. Great, great, great. Well, um, we've been talking about chronic disease. We've been talking about chronic dis-ease. We've been talking about conditions that have resulted from varying sources and varying realities. But uh, one thing that I would say with regard to chronic disease is what I have found is chronic disease in large part is due to chronic nutritional deficiency. Mm -hmm. So if you chronically undernourish yourself day after day after day, your pancreas will not function as it should. Mm -hmm. If you're not getting sufficient levels of vitamin D, then your pancreas and your heart definitely will not function as they should. And you've got chromium and vanadium that also are part of that whole paradigm of maintaining health with regard to your pancreas and, and other nutritional supplements. Unfortunately, our food supply has changed. Mm -hmm. It's not what mm -hmm. it was. You know, your, the broccoli you ate today or will eat today is not the same broccoli your grandmother ate when she was a child. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. food has been changed for whatever reason by whomever Food has been changed, and we now have to take responsibility and take charge and do everything that we can to make this world a better place for ourselves. Yes. Because our survival is critical. You know, your bloodline is critical. Do not let your bloodline be erased and leave it, you know, leave yourself in, in the hopes that the scorpion, well, leave hoping that that the people who have lied to us about everything else are having lied to us about some other stuff that happens after we're no longer here. So with that being said, I'm Dr. Baruch. This has been the Health Literacy Show. I want to thank Dr. Pooch, uh, thank Sister Denise, and of course thank Helis for being a part of what it is that we're doing that we're so passionate about. And uh, we'll see you guys next week with more great health programming. You all stay tuned to the eLife Media Network where we have a lot of good stuff going on. <laughs>